We're sure busy, we human beings. Seems we get busier all the time. Hustle, bustle, spinning our wheels. What's it all about? Why all this activity? Basically, everybody is trying to satisfy a few simple needs. We need some sort of shelter or cover, preferably in a neighborhood we like. We need something to eat, the kind of food we like and easy to get. We need a source of water for our community and ourselves. And all of these must be close together. Wild creatures have the same basic needs. Like humans, they have preferences, and it is the kind and spacing of the cover, food and water, that make an attractive place to live. Some animals prefer to live in woodlands, and the squirrel is definitely adapted for living in and around trees. Others, such as deer, prefer wooded country, but like scattered openings in their woodlands. Wild turkeys, too, are woodland and glade dwellers. Grasslands also have their special animals, creatures adapted to the big sky country. Prairie chickens cannot exist without permanent sod on which to breed and live. Home to a pocket gopher is underground, and the harmony between the gopher's physical development and his living place is obvious. Between the land and the open water are the marshes and swamps, and there are many kinds of animals that prefer this kind of living place. Waterfowl, like these mallards, depend on the wetlands, but less well-known species, like the Sora, also live here, and so does the familiar red wing. Some animals choose to live where fields and thickets come together with their foods and sheltering plants. Quail thrive on the variety man's farming has created. Rabbits are also able to adapt to many of man's changes. And the dove has benefited from man's farming, his shade tree planting, and especially his ponds. A good place to live, for man or animal, means a ready supply of food. And for the animal, it also means plants mature enough to provide both food and shelter. It can also mean living creatures available for others to feed upon. Such feeding is beneficial, or at least not usually harmful to man's interests. Everyone knows ducks need water, but they must also have food within reach. Unlike farm game, which must eat what is nearby, ducks can fly some distance from water to find their food. All animals need moisture of some kind. For many, like doves, this means water to actually drink. But moisture needs are met in other ways. For some animals, it can be succulent vegetation. Juicy worms provide both moisture and food for these baby robins. Cover means many things. It can be a preferred place for a nest or home. Tree nesting doves select one kind of cover, while ground nesting prairie chickens select another. Home may be a hole in the ground for the young or a hole in a tree. Cover also may mean protective concealment for young to grow up in. For this mother duck and her young, the heavy vegetation of the marsh provides necessary concealment. For the quail family, plants in the field where they live must be dense enough to conceal the chicks. Cover or a place to hide is necessary for animals of all ages. They need it when feeding or just resting. 
a rabbit can dare to loaf in the open if protective cover is nearby. But cover can provide protection from the weather as well as enemies. This is most important in winter when the weather is severe. Seeds of wildlife are often hard to come by when farming practices make continuous inroads on wildlife living places. But there are still many spots in a farm where such farm game as quail and rabbits can live. In fact, wildlife can be a crop of the land just like corn or cattle. All it takes is a little forethought on the part of those who want wildlife. On many farms today, the cleaned farm ones where the land is cleared completely, there is no place for wildlife, no cover in which to raise young, no shelter from winter's blast. A dove, quail, or rabbit crossing this landscape had better carry his lunch. On second thought, maybe it had better travel elsewhere or it might end up being lunch. On clean farms, wildlife is exposed to the ready beaks and jaws of hungry predators. The economic pressure on farmers today is severe and all hindrances to agriculture, like hedge fences or brush or gullies, are ruthlessly removed. When Osage orange fences framed every horizon, wildlife was at its best in the Midwest. The hedges interrupted the uniform expanses of prairie or cropland and created miles of living space for farm game to use. But when hedge fences go, so go wildlife homes. There is no welcome for wildlife in this stark landscape. The clean look farmer doesn't want this unsightly brush pile around and the logical step is to burn it. But the unsightly brush looked like home to wildlife and many creatures hung their home sweet home signs on it. A brush pile left in an out of the way place in the farm will serve a useful purpose for wildlife. Rabbits will use it all year. It will be a place where they can escape and hide from enemies. A coyote might run him down in the open, but a bunny's home free in a brush pile. It isn't just big brush piles that count, though they should be dense enough to provide shelter from weather and enemies. A rabbit headquarters can be established practically anywhere in a farm where brush can be piled. Out of the way gullies make good places for rabbit brush piles. All winter highways lead to brush piles. If they are close to winter food, like waste grain, brush piles are good places to live. When there's other cover nearby, Rabbits can travel safely from brush pile to brush pile to food. A fence row is ideal cover for rabbits and quail if allowed to grow up in weedy and woody growth. Brushy fence rows permit small game to travel from place to place and use sources of food they could not otherwise reach safely. Fence rows are especially valuable during wildlife's darkest hour, winter. When open places are covered with snow and ice, quail can still feed here. Hedge fences of Osage Orange that have survived the bulldozer are still furnishing cover for wildlife. When safety is nearby, rabbits can feed freely. Any farm has some places that aren't good for cropping due to soil deficiencies, roughness, or poor drainage. If cattle are kept from these areas, and if these areas are allowed to grow up to weeds, they make good places for small game to live. Fenced farm ponds can be developed especially well. 
Waste areas planted to Ceresia lespedeza prove their worth in winter snows. Rabbit enemies, however, do not appreciate Ceresia's good qualities nearly so much. This rabbit knows a good thing when he sees it and welcomes Ceresia's tangled protection. Leaving some areas unmowed next to denser cover is another simple help to wildlife. Instead of burning to remove brush and weedy growth, save it for wildlife. Last year's growth must be both nesting cover and nursery for this year's early nesters. Fire is the enemy of trees as well as wildlife. Bare woods won't produce much game. So instead of burning the woods, save that forest litter. It harbors a host of plants, insects, and seeds for small game to feed on. It also produces food for the human soul. When you're harvesting timber, be sure to leave den trees. They are necessary for wildlife you want to keep in the home place. Woodchucks are generally considered pests on the farm, but if tolerated, they'll provide good dens for rabbits, especially in winter. Where natural foods are scarce, food plots help overcome deficiencies. Tall plants in a food plot withstand winter winds and are available nourishing food when wildlife needs it most. There are many reasons for having wildlife on our farms. Most important, wildlife indicates a healthy farming operation. It also adds charm to a farm and lastly, it offers us the pleasure of the hunt. Beagle once inspired a 16th century Irish poet to write, I have heard a red beagle's cry on the slope beside the stream. It has raised the waves of my head, the sweet-voiced beagle's bay. Rabbits and beagles. They have brought pleasure to men through the ages. If they are going to continue to course our autumn fields, then we must make a place for them to live on the land. It is a simple thing to do and will assure our sons' sons the cry of the beagle as he trails the running rabbit. <laughs> 